So long story short, don't get these. And that's the quick review. If you want to listen more for the rest of the review, stick around and maybe drop a like down below for how much time I saved for you to tell you to not get these headphones, especially not in 2022 going into 2023. Now, first off, these headphones were originally released in 2020 and in 2020, they came out with micro USB charging. And I'll say it again, just in case you didn't catch that. Micro USB charging in 2020. And for what were originally $350 headphones. But these days you can almost regularly get these at a discount. And I got mine for 170 bucks. So almost half the price of what they originally released for. So I'm going to review these headphones as if they were $170 headphones and not $350 headphones. But even at $170, micro USB charging is just crazy for that kind of price. Especially when you can get some Soundcore Q45 headphones for $150 that has USB-C charging. I would say the best thing going for these headphones is the fact that they have the W1 chip in them, which is one of Apple's proprietary headphones chipsets. So if you're fairly heavy into the Apple ecosystem like I am, the W1 chip makes it very easy for you to seamlessly switch between your Apple devices. So like your iPhone, iPad, Mac, or Apple TV. If you want to listen to whatever you're watching on Apple TV with headphones on so you don't disturb your spouse or significant other, whoever, these headphones having the W1 chip in them makes it very easy to switch between all of your Apple devices instead of with regular Bluetooth headphones without the Apple silicone in them where you have to go through the settings and connect through Bluetooth to each of your headphones or your headphones in each of the devices. These are very easy to switch between devices if you're in the Apple ecosystem. These also have a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack for those that want a wired connection, whether it be for listening to music, listening to music through a deck, or in meetings where you want to connect your headphones directly to your laptop. And I guess one more thing people typically like is that these headphones have physical buttons. So if they're not touch capacitive or swipe or whatever, uh, for those that like physical buttons, they do have physical buttons. Or play, pause, skip track, volume up and down, or activating Siri. There is also a power button on them, so you can conserve battery life. And I would say that the build quality for these are nice. I just don't know if they're $170 nice, and especially not $350 nice. The case that these come with is also pretty nice and these headphones fold up very nicely inside of it and I do have absolute confidence that the case will protect these whenever you're traveling with them. So it's nice, uh, still I don't think it's $350 nice, but for $170 I do think that the case for these is quite adequate. But this is about where the good times end and I know it wasn't all good times in that last section, but uh, now we're really going to get into the bad stuff. First off, if you've seen my Soundcore Q35's review, you'll know that with my hair, I can have some trouble getting headphones, especially over the ear headphones on. So with how puffy my hair is, I need some good extension for headphones to reach down over my ears. Now these beats, the cups can barely reach my ears with the amount of extension that you can get. And also the cups are barely large enough to fit over my ears. I actually do have to fold my ears just a tad bit just to make sure I get a good seal of my ears inside of these small cups. And I believe that the seal is honestly where most of the noise cancellation comes from because with ANC on, I can still hear quite a bit of the outside noise, which I would say that these probably work about as on par as my Soundcore Q35s do and definitely worse than my AirPods Pro first gen and probably even my Beats Fit Pro. These are not very good with noise cancellation. Cause I mean, look, I, I'm for my day job, I'm working in the dining room. There can often be some noise going on in the background with people talking, visiting, you know, what have you. So having good noise cancellation can be very essential for me to be able to concentrate on my job. And these just don't do it at all. And with ANC on, I really can't tell the difference with them being off. So 
there's that for you. Even with this W1 chip inside of these, they're not great with noise cancellation. There is also no audio pass-through option for these headphones, not like with the AirPods, AirPods Pro, the Beats Fit Pro. These do not give you the option to pass through audio. So uh, you either get the ANC on or off, and that's about it. And might as well have them off because you're gonna be able to hear every, pretty much everything anyways. And without the pass through, that means I can't really talk to somebody with these on. I always have to move a cuff off one of my ears so I can actually hear them well enough. So there's that. If you need something with audio pass through, these aren't gonna do it for you. I would suggest maybe looking at some in ear solutions like the AirPods Pro, AirPods Pro 2s, or the Beats Fit Pros that actually have decent noise pass through, or even the Sony uh, XM4s or whatever, or the over the ear ones, because these just don't do it for 2020 headphones that started at $350. But I know I said I was gonna review these as if they're 170, so even at 170, my Soundcore Q35s just do a better job with pass through than these do and they're about on par with the noise cancellation. I'll say in retrospect, the Sony WH-1000XM4s that came out the same year as these for $350 would have been a better solution or better option to pick than these were. And Sony was killing it with the ANC and the audio pass-through for about the same price as these. And get this, those Sonys came with USB-C charging. Micro USB, 2020, $350 when it came out. Even at $170, it's crazy. Plus, even at $170, these do not have proximity sensors inside the cups. So if you remove these headphones, your audio is going to keep playing, regardless if you remove them or not, versus those Sonys or newer AirPods, AirPods Maxes, Air, you know, any of these newer headphones have proximity sensors in them for cheaper than these, even at the discount of 170. I, I don't, I don't understand it. Then there's the audio quality of these, which are absolutely pitiful. The bass is not great. I guess it's somewhat clear when it comes to the audio of like voices and whatnot, but I just don't think the sound quality is there for these. And uh, talking to people with these on can make it somewhat hard for other people to hear you. I'm not even going to give you an example of what it sounds like to talk through these because I just really don't think you should get these. I mean, it's pretty bad when my Beats Fit Pros have better bass than these do. These, these, they're on the charger, are better than these when it comes to silent audio. Their sound quality, it's crazy. I feel like I even get more bass out of my Soundcore Q35s when I'm not in uh, audio pass-through than I do with these. It's crazy. So I honestly could not suggest anybody buy these, especially at this time especially with the Apple AirPod Pro 2s that just came out with, I think, the new H2 chip, which means that the AirPod Pro Max's two second generations are probably going to come out soon, which means that that chip is going to be available to the Beats people so they can upgrade these to the new chip and hopefully get much better everything with them. And for $170, not worth it, especially not for $350. We could get the, even the new Sony XM 100, 1005, whatever, for the same price. So I'm returning these, and also it seems like these may have been released in 2017, I'm not sure. Amazon saying 2020, whatever, don't get them. 